Hey guys, it's Chris. From famous thefts that haven't been solved to robberies that seemed impossible but weren't, join me for eight of the most brilliant robberies ever. Number 8. Baker Street Burglary Fun fact, this particular heist was so legendary that it became a feature film via the bank job. The job itself happened at the Lloyd's Baker Street Bank Vault in London. A team of robbers went and tunneled in under the bank and right into the vault in order to steal 3 million euros, which is about 31 million in today's currency as this happened in 1971. The robbers were well equipped, which included having a lookout on the roof. This actually almost got them caught though, because a ham radio operator heard the calls from the lookout and informed the police. The police went to 700 different banks in the immediate area trying to find and stop the robbers. Even going to one, they were actively robbing. But because they tunneled in, there was no clear evidence of robbery on the vault itself, so they got away. Two years later, some men were arrested for connections to the robbery, but the mastermind of it was never caught. Number 7. D.B. Cooper there are some robberies that stand the test of time, especially when they're unsolved. Easily one of the most legendary of those is the story of D.B. Cooper. This happened on November 24th of 1971, the day before Thanksgiving. A man named Dan Cooper went to the Northwest Orient Airlines flight counter in Portland International Airport and purchased a ticket to Seattle, Washington. Once the flight took off, Cooper handed a napkin with a note to a flight attendant. She didn't read it at first, but then he told her, Miss, you'd better take a look at the note. I have a bomb. He demanded $200,000 for parachutes and for the plane to be refueled when they landed in Seattle, else the bomb would detonate. Not willing to risk the passengers, they complied with his demands. Once his demands were met, he let the passengers of the plane go, save for the crew who would operate the plane. Cooper outlined his flight plan to the crew and had them take off. This included them going very slowly in the air without stalling, even having the landing gear out, which would cause drag and slow the plane even more. Eventually, Cooper had the remaining crew all go into the cockpit while he put on the parachutes and opened the rear hatch, jumping out of the plane with his bomb and the money. He was never seen again. Pictures of him were shown all around the country and no one could find him. They searched the forest area where he was said to have landed. No body was found, nor was any of the money he took ever recovered. To this day, the mystery of D.B. Cooper has haunted the government, mainly because it's the only unsolved case of air piracy in modern aviation history. The case remained open for decades before finally being suspended in 2016. The case has been made into movies, TV show episodes via series like Leverage, where they solved the case, and more. Number 6. Church Building the church that we're going to reveal was stolen was 200 years old, of Orthodox descent and residing in Russia. It has stood near the village of Komarov since 1809. The 200-year-old building, which no longer had its icons and other religious valuables, was a school for disabled children during the Soviet era before it was closed down in 1998 and turned over to the church. So far, everything feels pretty basic and not really worth stealing, right? However, there's a twist that's about to come, and no one could have predicted it would end in the church disappearing. You see, the people in the village near the church were very poor. There was a local businessman who would buy bricks for one ruble, which was around four cents at the time. It doesn't sound like much, but for them, it was a lot. To the people of the village, the church wasn't in use. It had no true value, so no one was inhabiting it at all. It was just there. So they decided to start taking it brick by brick, selling each one to the businessman so they could get a little money. One by one, brick by brick, the church was brought down to its foundations pretty much, and no one noticed for a really long time. Eventually, church officials returned to the area to try and make use of the building once more. So imagine their surprise when they found nothing but the foundation and a few sections of the walls left. Obviously, since basically the whole town was in on it, no one could be prosecuted or even charged. After all, how could they prove who took the bricks, sold the bricks, and how could you charge them when you don't know how many bricks they took? The church was livid, but the villagers were able to survive thanks to the money they got. In their eyes, it was a robbery that paid off in spades. And now for number 5, but first be sure to tell me which one you think was the most impressive in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell before you go. Number 5. The Empire State Building This particular theft wasn't about moving the building from one place to another. Rather, this theft was all about transferring ownership of the Empire State Building in a legal yet illegal way. The best part? The people who did this worked for a newspaper. We promise this is a true story. 
In 2008, the New York Daily News realized accurately that it would be very easy to steal the Empire State Building by doing the most basic of things, by faking a deed exchange. Why would they do such a thing? For altruistic reasons, believe it or not. This was done to expose a major loophole in the system that had been done by less scrupulous people in the United States and the UK for many years to obtain deeds to various lands, causing people to lose their homes, businesses, and more. The newspaper, though, didn't just want to do this, they wanted to make a spectacle to prove that anyone could do this if they were clever enough, and thus did things like putting original King Kong star Fay Ray as a witness on the documents, making a fake 20-pound notary stamp which shared a name with bank robber Willie Sutton, and filed paperwork with the city to transfer the deed to the property. 90 minutes later, the deed was transferred to a fake account they'd set up called Neelot's Properties LLC. If you can't tell, that's stolen spelled backwards. Very clever people at this newspaper, but clearly not everyone else who fell for it. As hopefully you're now asking, no, they didn't keep the Empire State Building. After showing off what they did in their own paper and causing quite a reaction, they happily returned the building to the original owners. Their plan worked though and the system was fixed to prevent this kind of thing from happening again. Though this may be the first time in history that a good crime led to a serious change in the law system. And hopefully it won't need to happen ever again for another loophole in the laws of the country. Number 4. Credit Lyonnais Paris Burglars This legendary crime took place on March 30, 2010 at a bank called Credit Lyonnais in Paris, France. The focus of the group doing the crime were safety deposit boxes that were filled to the brim with cash and valuables, as well as millions of euros. The nature of the crime was simple and elegant. They dug a tunnel under the bank from the next door cellar. Then they cut a hole into the bank's deposit box room, which was in the basement of the building via a tunnel lance. They were caught by a guard, but it was only one guard as that was the only person in the bank at the time. They tied the guard up to a chair, robbed the place, and then to ensure they didn't leave any evidence behind, they lit the place on fire. The sprinkler stopped permanent damage and got the guard's attention so he could call for help once he was free. But the damage was done, and anything that could be used to identify them was gone. And as such, they were never caught. Number 3. Antwerp Diamond Heist The Antwerp Diamond Heist was done by the now legendary School of Turin, headed up by Leonardo Notar Bartolo and is the greatest diamond heist in the history of the world. Why? Because it was supposed to be impossible to rob this particular vault. Yet they did it anyways. The details of the crime are as intricate as the group itself. And here's the gist of it. Leonardo himself got himself inside of the vault when the place was closed, and his brothers of the school were able to use an elevator that they rigged to go undetected in regards to motion sensors to get to the vault floor. Then they proceeded to open the locks of the vault in various ways, including subverting all the sensors and alarms that were meant to keep the safe locked. Eventually, they got into the vault and worked out how to unlock 123 safety deposit boxes that had diamonds and all sorts of other valuables, including official documents for verification, which would be important in selling the items later on. When this was done, untold wealth had been stolen. The only one of the crew who was ever caught was ironically Leonardo himself because of DNA evidence from a sandwich. The rest were never caught, and the crime still stands as one of the best ever. Number 2. Carl Gugassian This is the story of a man who went from petty crime to one of the greatest robbery sprees ever. Carl Gugassian was a kid when he got shot after trying to rob a candy store. He was sent to a state youth facility as a result, and the moment he got out, he started to build up his career of being a criminal, but not in the way you would expect. Instead of building up his mind and skills on the robbery circuit, he instead built up his brain and skills in various fields to ensure that his future plans wouldn't end in him getting caught or shot or both. Carl went to the University of Pennsylvania, and he got a master's degree in systems planning. He also got military training and was taught how to use weapons effectively. Then, once he felt he was ready, he started plotting bank robberies. He hesitated for the first several, but eventually, he committed 50 different bank robberies, accumulating $2 million in cash and was only caught because of bad luck. He became known as the Friday Night Robber because he would only rob banks in small towns near freeways and in the winter months when it would get dark by the time the banks would close. He would use scare tactics to ensure that no one was on an even keel when he robbed them, thus they couldn't give accurate descriptions of who he was or what he did. Every robbery took less than two minutes, in which he would either have a getaway car ready, a bike a few blocks away, or a forest he could run to and hide in easily. And to further ensure his success, he used caches to hide his loot, which was how he got caught as a bunch of kids found his caches, and there was evidence in it to put him away. 
for only five of the robberies, though, which meant he couldn't be attached to the other 45 that he did. Number one, the vacuum gang. In France, starting around 2006, a group of thieves realized there was a flaw in the system to protect money in supermarkets known as Monoprix. What made this particular store special was that they used suction tubes to help distribute money and get cash envelopes from one place to another. The money itself was locked behind a safe, which is hard to get into, but the tubes could be hacked, and they realized how to do that without getting caught. According to La Parisian, to put it directly into the coffers of cash, cashiers use pneumatic suction pipes where they slide tubes filled with money. The robbers realized that it was sufficient drilling a hole in the pipe near the trunk then connect a powerful vacuum cleaner to capture the money store. They no longer have to deal with the shield. Going for the tubes was a brilliant move, because drilling or hacking into safes can be loud, dangerous, and sometimes unrewarding because some can have special systems to prevent being broken into. But because of the nature of these suction tubes, you didn't need much time or work to get to them and then the money just the right set of tools to hack in, and then a vacuum to get the money out. By the end of their run, the vacuum gang had gotten over $800,000 in bounty via a 15-store robbing spree, and they haven't been caught. In fact, the only evidence of them is shoddy video showing masked men entering and leaving an area. That shows how good they were that this was the only thing that could identify them. Thanks for watching, everyone. What did you think of these incredible robberies and the people that perpetrated them? Can you believe what they got away with? Which of these do you feel was the most brilliant of all? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to Worldlist, and I'll see you next time on the channel.